Have you ever heard footsteps in your home that you couldn't account for? Would you read a journal from an abandoned building? Has a terrifying experience caused you to avoid a room in your own home? Today, we test the believability of the trench coat shadow man. Welcome to Believing the Bizarre, where we dive into the unknown and the unusual and tell you whether or not we find it believable. That is right. Listen, we've had a lot going on, a lot going on. So really quick, I want to say thank you to Ali Nat from Let's Get Haunted for coming on our episode, our podcast last week about the Matrix. It's a lot of fun. We've heard really great responses. Mm -hmm. Um, Seems like. Our listeners, Bizarros, y'all out there get along really well with the Hanis in terms of Yeah. There's a lot of good content going you like. On. Yeah. Yeah. So that was awesome. Also, thank you, Kedra from I was gonna say if you didn't. Perplexity, a mystery podcast. Thank you again for having us on and telling us a wild story, the Doddleston message is really fun story. Uh, so a crazy story. Yeah. So that's a two parter over there. Go check out Perplexity a Mystery Podcast. And and one last housekeeping thing. Just a reminder Housekeeping? Our, yeah. Housekeeping. <laughs> Our live stream event, Believing the Booze Are, is Friday, May 3rd, 9 p.m. Eastern on yeah. Twitch. So if you like that stellar housekeeping joke I just told, there's going to be plenty of that kind of stuff. Just imagine him with two rum and Cokes in each hand <laughs> and five in his belly. Absolutely. So there's going to be listener submission stories, just like the ones we're talking about today, except shorter. Games, giveaways, quizzes, drinks, of course. Some punishments. For Charlie and myself, in case you do. <laughs> You're just going to say, just for Charlie. <laughs> poorly on quizzes and engagement <laughs> posts that producer Ben has planned. So again, that is May 3rd, live on Twitch, 9 p.m. Obviously, it, it's free. You yeah. can sign, mm-hmm. Even if you don't have a Twitch account, you can sign up for free. It's free. And watch it for free. For free. For free. We'll so, be there for free. For free. Um, Charlie, it is time for listener submissions. Of two, of, it is. two of them, to be exact. A lot of people tell us they love these. These are their favorite episodes, their favorite stories, because they have that personal touch. Yeah, that's got the, it's like the, I know, I'm like, only one handshake away from that person. You know, like, have you ever heard of the six handshake? Yeah. Okay. It's like that, but closer. You know a guy who knows a guy who dated a girl, they broke up, but knew a guy. Yeah. His mom. But when you listen to his submission, right? It's like, that person told this podcast, now I'm here. It's only one handshake away. One, one handshake away. That's right. Sometimes they're not as extraordinary as some of the, the bigger episodes we have, but they had, they're personalized. And, but also, sometimes you'll get a very, very intense listener submission, and that's kind of like the best of both worlds. So with that said, let's get into the first story. All right, this first story comes to us from Travis in Indiana. Mm, okay. Indiana. Uh, there's not much there. Well, there's Indianapolis. Yep. I'll be there in November. Oh, for, for, for Taylor what? Swift. For Tay. I was going to say, not for Dave. That's wrong. No. I I paid way too much for those Taylor <laughs> Swift tickets, especially like to go to Indianapolis. No yeah. offense, Indianapolis. Did you pay? Did it cost Joey? <laughs> was it her first born? He picked, he picked up, no, he picked up a fresh job. <laughs> Everyone's got to help out. So it takes place between 2016 and 2017. Here's a disclaimer from Travis. Quote, I personally write horror stories. But I don't want this personal story to be confused with my works of fiction. All right. Then don't send us a work of fiction, Travis. You know, I wonder, should I shout it? I t- I'll be honest. I typically leave last names out because I don't, there's no value. Did he say he had an issue with it? No, he didn't. But didn't I, I, well, but I mean, if he's an author, should I shout him out? So I think you, so. Yeah. All right. Well, Travis Fry, it, it, you know, I don't know if he, I'm sure he has maybe stuff published somewhere. If you search that not to be mistaken for Travis Fry Min who was the third base player for the Cleveland Indians when they were the Indians for the Guardians in the early 2000s. And I have a shirt and a hat with his name on it, Fryman. I bet my grandma knew who that was. Number 17. So here's a little backstory for Travis. Back when Travis was in middle school in 2010, which was the first year that Charlie and I went to college, Travis's town had a concrete drop-off. Cool. Essentially, it was just in the city, they would just chuck these broken pieces of sidewalk after repairs. Oh, so a place that they took concrete to drop. Yeah, like imagine it's a junk. It's okay. like if it's broken and they're like junkyard for concrete. That's not what I was thinking. I was expecting like 
it was like a bridge or something, and like it was a drop off in the water. I don't know on boats. I don't know what made it drop. No, 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 no. It's it's a it's a place that they decide this is where we're going to throw the concrete. Okay, Um, which doesn't sound very aesthetically appealing, but um, so it was this very large field that turned into mountains of broken rock by some woods. So wanting to have a little fun as the youth in Indiana do. Travis and a couple of his buddies often ran around these concrete mountains and played around. It kind of reminds me of just like a huge concrete junkyard. They the kids played in the concrete around the concrete. They might have climbed the concrete. I don't. I'm know. sure they climbed the concrete. There's not soon. There's not much else to do. <laughs> in it's an actual. What's the name of the town? Valparaiso, Valparaiso, Val, Indiana. Valparaiso. <laughs> that makes it sound Italian. <laughs> uh, it makes me think of two games that make me think of like junkyards: The Quarry. I never played that one. And Life is Strange. I never played that one either. Well, yeah, I didn't play this. And I, Heavy Rain. Oh yeah, I and watched you play Heavy Rain. Nam and Jaden. Yeah, yeah, that's where he dies if you if you mess up. Jeez. In the junkyard. In the junkyard. So one day, a few of Travis's friends stumbled upon this abandoned hut in the concrete. Uh, jungle. That sounds like the beginning of a horror movie. They said it had random belongings in there, like an old television, random scrap, a worn out teddy bear, and a journal. Oh my god. And let me tell you, after watching Imaginary with Ben, producer Ben, and doing that for horror movie review, I am so skeptical of this teddy bear. <laughs> it's almost like, um, you did, what did you did, Baba, what was the Baba Baba called? Vanga? Yeah, it's like Baba, Baba Yaga is the, is the creature with the hut. Oh. With that has the feet. Maybe this is a, a Baba Yaga kind of deal. Like, maybe. All right, maybe it's not. <laughs> From the look on your face. My son keeps yelling, Bobby Ga. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Bobby Ga. If anyone knows what Bobby Ga is, let me know. Or don't. Or maybe don't. So, so they're in this hut, right? And they, they say the, all this stuff, the old TV, teddy mm-hmm, bear, whatever. Mm-hmm. But this journal. They find a journal. One friend in particular picks up and starts reading from the journal. Would you do that? No, that's the that's the fucking movie Evil Dead, and it's also Cabin in the Woods, which is a play on Evil Dead. But yes, yes it, nothing good comes from that. Travis doesn't remember the specifics, but the journal was from the perspective of a female who was going through some really rough times and was very sad. Okay, so it wasn't Travis that was doing this; it was his friend. His friend is the one that read it. So Travis is kind of telling his friend the story right now. Yeah, mm-hmm. and at school, remember they're they're young, middle school. This friend had been telling Travis and everyone about the journal. And of course, some people don't believe them. But there's this girl that Travis's friend was into. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and she was intrigued by this journal thing. So we had to double down, right? You, you can't just tell a story. You got you know, you to go prove that this exists. And you know, if, it, if it's a girl involved in your middle school, you're not thinking rationally. You're not thinking no. about the evil dead. I don't think. I don't think. Any middle school boy can be accused of ever thinking rationally. This is before the Evil Dead remake, too, by three years. Okay. So he's like, okay, I'm going to go get that journal and prove to you that this exists. Because that's how you get a date. (laughs) Uh, So he goes back to the abandoned hut, finds the journal, but there's a new entry. And the handwriting's a little shaky, but very much the same handwriting as the rest of the journal. And it said... I'll find who touched my journal. I have an idea. I'll kill you. Bur- oh my god! So very, very freaky. And I understand he kind of did it to himself by obviously going there and touching things that aren't his. But at the same time, if you put yourself in that middle school mindset, I would be freaking out. Yeah, like you just feel like I'm being watched. Someone know, like they know mm-hmm. it's me. You know, just bad juju. Thankfully, nothing happened. And they're 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 well and good. That's kind of what I'm saying. I think he, the way Travis framed it in his submission was, as far as I know, I think he's still alive. <laughs> and I'm just gonna paint a bow on this story and say that he's fine. Oh boy, Travis's friend is fine. So here's Travis's story. Quote: It was around dusk when me and my two friends Rick and Renee, which are not real names, oh okay, went to the drop off. Rick and I were familiar with the area. Renee had recently moved to the area, and we wanted to show her the spot. It had a tall mound in the center, surrounded by a thick wall of shattered pieces of concrete. The crescent shape was roughly the size of a baseball field and almost as tall as a house. The mound in the center reminded me a lot of a pillar from The Lion King, 
because it had one piece that jutted up in the same way. We used it to escape from life, to smoke a little, practice parkour, and I would also meditate. At this time, I was practicing Buddhist, and in the time, the atmosphere did feel darker. I even found someone else use it for spiritual things, and they left an incense burner dangling from the tip of the mound. The night that everything happened, I noticed that it was missing. I ignored it, and we all just enjoyed running around and hanging out. Renee, being one really into nature, wanted to go out into the woods and see what it was like. Because it is by, it's like by the woods, the mountains and all yeah. that stuff. When we went to head in that way, we discovered something that we pretty much ignored or overlooked by the entrance. It looked like a pallet, but it was broken up and painted into a cross on one side. It also had some rocks and gravel mounted up in the front, so we assumed it kind of looked like a makeshift grave. That's freaky. Yeah. The mound was not big enough for a body, so we thought maybe it was just in remembrance of someone or a pet. Hamster. It, well, bigger than a hamster. Maybe a dog. Cat. Yeah. M- maybe. Chicken. I don't think I would take my animal to a public dumping ground. No. No. That's really weird. And it's not big enough for a body or like a full body. Yeah. Or a a human man, human, maybe a child human. Uh Either way, they ignored it and they went into the woods just kind of avoiding it. As we walked around, we came across a pentagram made of rocks and two black burnt out candles diagonal from each other. I don't quite remember what I said, but while recently looking back on this night, Renee reminded me that I was dared by Rick to kick out one of the candles. And without thinking too much about it, I ran up and booted a candle. Oh, my God. Mistakes have been made. There's so many mistakes. In this in this pillar pile. We need a horror movie class. I think there's a lot of things <laughs> that need to be taught in high school and middle school. Um, yeah. You don't know, split up. We need horror movie literacy. You know, yes. like, understand, yeah, don't split up. Don't walk around your house barely clothed when you hear a bad noise. Don't tempt... The demons by kicking the candle. Don't tempt the uh, the demons by kicking the candle. Don't read from books that don't belong to you. Don't explore a place that you shouldn't. Well, they've obviously not taken the class that doesn't exist. They haven't, which isn't their fault. But, you know, let's get them some horror movies. So, shortly after the moment of kicking over the candle, Renee went off on her own for a second, and she called them over because she found the skull of a small cat or a rodent. We realized that the two were connected because it was taken care of and was only a couple feet away from the pentagram. At this moment, we all felt like we were being watched. So we promptly left back to my house, and the whole walk back, we felt like an energy was attached to us, either following us or trying to pull us back. When we got back to the house, I was on edge, so I started to meditate. And Renee had me guide her through the process because she also felt a little on edge. The only one who didn't was Rick. Who ended up just going home instead. While we were meditated, I heard Renee feel flustered and uncomfortable, so I put my hand on her leg, which seemed to calm her down. A few moments later, Renee looked up at me and said, I don't know why, but I kept seeing a woman crawling at me from the grave when I closed my eyes. Oh my god. As soon as you touched me, it disappeared. She also explained that my hand and my body was radiating more heat than usual. Pretty pretty creepy right that's really creepy but also is that is that middle school flirting (laughs) i don't know (laughs) maybe the idea that you see this every time you close your eyes and obviously the the imagination is a wonderful tool a hell of a drug but if you if it's something you can't control like every time you close your eyes if you can't control or change the image in your head you just like like you're actually like like you're not controlling you're seeing something else that is being presented to you Mm -hmm. every time you close your eyes until like that touch that's ugh, that's yeah. i mean i've had like moments where i can't control my own imagination and on that point i take my phone out and i dull my sensations by going on tiktok there you go that's so what that's TikTok what i is do built for it is and that's what i do sometimes not often so renee and rick claim that they never felt anything after that night and none of them have ever gone back since however Travis admits that he went through a very dark period after this experience. Nothing paranormal, but just feeling very depressed and low for almost a year. So, my question to you is, do you think there's any chance that this is just... Like, you were kind of joking, but commenting on just middle school, you know, flirting. Do you think they just freak themselves out? Like, you're 
I think this is a little older. I don't think this is quite in 2010. I could be wrong. I get the feeling that they're a little bit older. But let's say they're like 12 to, well, I mean, also middle school. He doesn't, he didn't give me an exact age. Let's say 13, 14. Yeah. You're in the woods. You see something really spooky. You And then you see a grave. Then you come upon this like You see what pentagram, you assume is a grave. But you assume is a grave. This like pentagram thing with candles. And then you interact with it. It's not like you leave it alone. You interact with it. You kick it. And are you just, are you, is it just a leveling up of freaking yourself out? Okay. So I'm going to answer this with an anecdote. This is, it's a graphic story, like trigger warning for suicide. Oh, what you're about to say. Yeah. Okay. Behind my house, there was a, a crops of woods, a little forest. Is that um, where Wolfman lived? Yes. It wasn't where Coyote Man lived. Coy Coyote Man. I'm sorry. Anyway. Coy- coyote Man or Coyote Man? Coy- coyote Man. <laughs> okay. But I would play out of that there with um, my friends all the time. Until I was about in fifth grade. So I was about 12. Until one day, a group of teenagers older than me, they were, I was a preteen, they were like 16, 17. Big boys. Yeah. Big boys and girls. And girls. And they thought it'd be fun to get a gun, a revolver, and they played Russian roulette in the woods. Someone fucking lost. And... I had not been, I, I refused to go back in the woods since then. So I think there is, there's definite energy with dark things. And I think as a child, you can pick up on that a little bit easier. And it sounds like they're in that age range where they could pick that up. Mm. It's also, I mean, it's creepy imagery for anyone, but it could also be like, we're maybe more likely to rationalize it away as something else yeah where their imagination and and maybe just their innocence is more in tune to certain things i mean they always say younger children are closer yeah it's the veil so so you're saying that there's a chance that bad juju happened there and they are detecting it i think yeah i think if anyone's gonna sense it it's gonna be the kids Mm. i think there's a good chance of that Well, that fits with what Travis is saying, because it seems as though he took something home. Yeah. But he's the one that kicked the candle. Shouldn't do that. No. Even if it wasn't a dare. Also, how long ago did this... Like, there's a whole... There's a human aspect to this, too. Yeah. Like, yes, you're afraid of paranormal. You're afraid of this, you know, this... I mean, she says it's like a a woman, a creepy woman crawling Mm -hmm. out of the grave. That's terrifying. But also, like, (laughs) if, if you ask Travis's parents... What scares them the most about this scenario? It's probably that their child is like at night <laughs> yes. in this area where there's obviously other people. Mm-hmm. Like somebody else had incense there, mm-hmm. and the, you know, people are there's abandoned stuff, there's journals and and the, broken someone things. Someone put those rocks in that formation. Somebody put those rocks up. Somebody must have been there relatively recently to light those candles, yeah. make the pentagram. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's happening in Indiana, Travis. Bad stuff. They're trying to they're trying to get the Pacers to. <laughs> this is a long time ago though. I don't know. It's uh, it's it's creepy imagery. It's, Very much. It would be. It's, it's horror movie imagery, really. Yeah. I and wonder. The skull. They must have killed something to get that skull, or at least found something dead. Found something dead, maybe. I don't know. I wonder how much this story fueled his desire to write horror fiction, and like other things he did, maybe. Well, it probably helped. <laughs> it probably did start <laughs> something in him. Yeah. All right, so that is Travis's story. Thank you, Travis, for that's submitting. The end? Yeah, that's it. That's God all you get. Damn. That's he's he's okay now. I think I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's doing fine. Uh, but that's Travis's story. Uh, let's move on to story number two. All right, this listener submission is from Brittany Dubs. Brittany W. <laughs> Brittany Dubs. In Michigan, nearby. Go Wolverines. Mm, right? Mm, let's go with the Lions. I like the Lions. I do actually, I genuinely do like the Lions. Yeah. Jared Goff. Yeah. Gibbs. Um, Gibbs, Jameer Gibbs. I like Gibbs. I like Gibbs. I like St. Brown. So. I know football. Yeah. <laughs> Amaron St. Brown. It's a fun name to say. So Brittany says that her family's very open and comfortable about joking about ghosts. Oh, okay. It happens often. I don't know if they, if, you know, there's, if it's a coping mechanism, yeah. you know, or. It depends on the family. Yeah. yeah. I, that makes sense. Do you have but, a witchy family? Well, that can be something we come back to here. She says it's common for someone to hear a noise or a bump and just kind of laugh it off and be like, oh, it must have been a ghost. 
Yeah. So I can't really do that with my grandma because she'd be like, pull the cross out and <laughs> throw hold, some holy water Hold on this, me. Charlie, for the next 40 minutes. <laughs> yes. Don't leave. Read this passage. Yeah, exactly. Brittany also acknowledges that when it comes to saying that they actually saw or heard something, they don't lie about it. Like, they'll joke, like, oh, that must have been a ghost. But there was kind of, there's kind of like a, like, ghosts aren't taboo in this mm-hmm. house. And there's kind of a general understanding that it's okay to joke about for some levity. But I'm also believing you when you say you hear something because I've also heard things. Like, it's kind of like a... Uh, an accepted, acceptedly haunted house. Okay, I by get the it. family. So it's like it's okay to joke about it, but like we all know, like the the it's almost like a uh, like a secret that everyone knows. There's a term for that. It's like when there's an open secret, like everyone knows about it, but they you don't want to talk you, about you it. You don't talk about it. I also think, to a certain degree, it is coping. Like if we make fun of it, it takes a little bit of the seriousness out of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, it's oh, it's just a joke. You know, you don't, and you don't want to, and you have kids too. You don't want to freak them out. Right. If the ghost is funny, it's funny. Yeah. I, it's just easing the tension is what I think. I would need consistent levity because Brittany claims that they all truly believe that it was haunted or occupied by multiple spiritual entities. Jeez, I could not even imagine. No, no. She said some of the experiences are just fleeting moments. For instance, Brittany mentions that there was a time when she saw her grandfather a few months after he passed. Mm, okay. And her brother saw feet that weren't his in a mirror's reflection. So Does that mean feet next to his or they're on top of his feet? What I does think, that mean? I think it is next to is my guess. Or it's the angle of a mirror. Mm-hmm. You're not seeing the whole, it's like not a full body mirror maybe. Okay. But you just see feet near you. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. But just like creepy, unsettling, quick moments. Early jump scares of a horror movie, you could say. Yeah. However, there's kind of a longer experience. There's not like a long, it's not like a a consistent experience, but there is one entity over the course of like 15 years that they've seen a couple of times. And this entity is the main reason why she submitted to the podcast. Okay. If you have a guess what this Uh, guy might be wearing. (laughs) uh, Is it something... To do with his head? Uh, no, it's the trench coat. It's the name oh, of the episode. Oh, dude, I thought it was that. No. I mean, it, I guess it could be. But no, no, no. No, it's, it's the trench coat. It's the name guy. of the damn episode. Yeah, that makes well, sense. Well, that was like an hour ago that we that started makes, that. That so. makes sense. So here is Brittany's story. Quote, I'm going to be talking about one specific man and the experiences my family has had that we believe are all linked to him. My parents moved into the house we live in now when I was just a few months old. Nothing particularly strange happened until I was around three or four. My mom had an experience with one of the entities that I believe haunts our house. My dad's first alarm goes off at 4 a.m. every weekday. That is disgusting. That is the scariest thing we're going to talk about on the podcast today. That's rough. 4 a.m. You got to go to bed at like 8. It's like eat dinner. Go to bed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good night. I have an earlier dinner. You probably adjust your life to fit that. But that Go to bed after lunch. <laughs> sucks. Yeah. And so he gets up around 6.30 to get ready for work and is always out of the house by 5 a.m. Be- Wait, what? His alarm goes off at 4. Uh-huh. At 4.30, he's getting ready and he leaves by 5. You said 6.30. Oh, did I? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. You were backtracking for him. Oh, jeez. Six- Even 6.30 is rough, y'all. Um, <laughs> yeah. 4 a.m. he wakes up, 4.30 a.m. he's getting ready, out of the house by 5 a.m. I was like, how does he physically do this? <laughs> this is a dimensional yeah. shifting. Dimensional dad. Dimensional dad. So on this particular day, it goes on normally, and at 5, he's saying goodbye to mom and shuts the bedroom door behind him. She listens as he gets his boots on and hears the front door open and then close behind him. Now, me being three... I'm just sleeping next to my mom in their bed, and once my dad leaves, she checks to make sure I'm sleeping before getting settled herself and trying to go back to sleep. Yeah. But within a few minutes, my mom hears the sound of boots on our stairs that go to the basement. The stairs are right by the front door, and when you come in, you find yourself at a little landing where you can either continue on straight to go down the stairs to the basement or turn to your left and come up into the kitchen Which goes to the rest of the house, so it's split level. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'm assuming that's what we're talking about here. 
So, hearing the boots on the stairs, she assumes it's just my dad coming back because he forgot something, which, to be fair, sometimes did happen. Yeah, I've done that. She continues hearing the heavy footfalls all the way back to the bedroom, and then hears the door open as if he's coming back into the room. I forgot it was five in the f***ing morning. We were in bed. <laughs> I just quit my job, honey. <laughs> my mom decides to turn over and ask what he's doing, while she's also going to scold him for wearing his boots in the house which is something she hated. But before she could flip to her side, some unseen force pushed her on her back and she noticed a man was standing on top of her and began to choke her. My mom described this man as being dark as a shadow, wearing a trench coat and boots. She said that he gave off the feeling of darkness, just complete hate and anger. As he was choking my mom, he leaned over and said in a nasty gravelly aged voice this was my house first get out you bitch oh my god and Uh. i I promise you he actually said that word for word wow my mom was struggling to breathe and was trying to fight him off while doing so her eyes closed briefly and when they reopened he was gone before she could really say or do anything he seemed to just completely disappear the feeling of his hand on her neck was still there but the man in the trench coat was gone Man, hard cut to the kid in the bed and out cold. It's a question for you, Charlie. Yeah. Obviously terrifying, violent, very scary, but a question. Is there, and this can be safe for the discussion as well, is there any chance this could have been a dream? Now, okay, sometimes you wake up in the middle of REM. Yeah. Rapid Mm -hmm. eye movement, Mm -hmm. dreaming Mm -hmm. time, especially if it's not your time to wake up. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like a harsh wake up for her because it was her dad's alarm clock or her, her husband's alarm clock. She hears the boots of her husband, yeah, which is a normal sound, and as that's happening, she drifts off back to sleep and back into REM, and it's the mixture of the real world versus her dreamland, where the boots, being one of the last sounds she hears falling asleep, seeps into the dream, which uh, turns into a nightmare. Yeah. And the only reason, well, I mean... It's, it's, I'm not saying I believe this to be true. I'm not saying I don't think this is paranormal. But, you know, it's also like her eyes close, and then she has the sensation of waking up, and it's all yeah. done. It does fall into, um, you know, you, you could say it classified as, like, uh, sleep paralysis, right? Yeah. But even not that. Like, I'm, I, like I'm not, I don't necessarily think she had a sleep paralysis moment, because I don't think she – she couldn't move. And, you know, actually, you know what? There is merit to that, because people feel like they're suffocating. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it could have been – it could have been sleep paralysis. But even still. She was that, on her back, too, when it happened. paranormal, though? Well, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, I know. I know. That's a whole the thing. I, the idea is that, is there any chance that this could have been a, a bad dream that she woke up from? I think that depends on a couple things. I think it depends on consistency. Does this happen again? Are there more incidents where she sees the same entity? Does she hear that same voice while not being in bed? Like, are there... Factors that happen outside of this one scenario that you could relate back to it. Mm-hmm. I guess that's my biggest question to answer your question with well, the question. We'll be able to answer that in the discussion when you know the whole story. Right. But right now, you could definitely say there's a chance it could be yeah. and, uh, and not paranormal. And let me be clear. I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to discredit this. I mean, the whole family believes the house is haunted. Obviously, you and I believe in ghosts and haunted houses. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not trying to say I don't think this is paranormal. I think this very well could be paranormal. I just want to at least throw that possibility out there. Because when it's very early in the morning, you don't have to wake up, but you wake up and you're drifting back to sleep. Mm-hmm. I mean, the things that can happen in those between those realities of half awake, half asleep. Yeah. I mean, especially with like the boots, the boots is the connection for me. Mm-hmm. That's what she hears falling asleep. Mm-hmm. And then it's the start of the dream. Yeah. Or they got a violent ass ghost up in this house. Yeah. And I would not feel comfortable going back to sleep in this no, house. I would say at that point, we got to move. Mm-hmm. We got to move and burn the thing down. Yeah. But getting back to the story, your opinion in, on the next step is exactly correct. Because obviously she's shaken horrified. But, quote, she got on to make sure that I was okay, (laughs) and I was still asleep. Her being Brittany, the Mm -hmm. three-year-old, completely oblivious to what was going on. So nothing ever came of this. She retold the events to my dad, her parents, a.k.a. Brittany's grandparents, and other family members, and everyone believed her 
But nothing ever really came of it, and nothing else happened for a few years. It was about three years later when my brother saw the man this time. He had been down in the basement putting his laundry in the bins when he had a really strong feeling as if someone was watching him. And he glanced over at my dad's storage room in the basement. I'll be honest, this room has always had a feeling to it. Everyone in my house agrees on this. It's like someone or something is in there, but you're down there alone, so you just feel like you shouldn't be in there. And obviously way too freaked out to check anything out. In this room, my dad kept his hunting stuff and also had a table and a rocking chair in there that could be seen from the outside room. I have this visual of her father rocking in this chair and cleaning a hunting rifle. (laughs) Do you clean a hunting rifle? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gotta give him him a bath. If you don't Mm. clean a gun, it'll jam. Mm. Some all the soot gets in there. We were on um, plastic eggs right now in the bathtub. Joey loves plastic eggs. Just like that. That's the same thing, really. But I'm just also like, if this was like a horror movie, I feel like he'd be the first one to like collapse psychosis because like, yeah, it's his room. It's kind of like Oculus, which we watched recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like the dad's office is where the bad stuff was. So he Mm -hmm. was the first one to fall under that. Yeah, yeah. He's on there cleaning his guns and this is where the thing whispers. It's yeah. It's just so, like he's just cleaning the gun. You see, yeah. So, wait, 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 so, mm-hmm. You're like, and he's just like, what, what was that word? Yeah. yeah. In all seriousness, it seems like a really creepy place for a rocking chair. Is, like, if maybe sometimes people put things places and they never sit on it. I mean, there's yeah. chairs in my house I never sit on. Maybe he just thought like this is a nice place. Eventually, I'll sit here, and then they're like, oh, it's creepy. There, it's haunted AF. Yeah. He's like, well, I'm not moving. Well, it's a good place for the chair for the ghost. He's like, where can I put this chair that I'm never going to sit in? I hate, I don't feel like selling. How do you, I, I think like every day that ghost was in that chair, just in three in the morning, just going. Uh, uh, you, uh, that, uh, as you're going down the steps to do the laundry yeah. and you just hear that. Uh, 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 Go back up the steps. You're like, oh, they're not that dirty. <laughs> I get another couple days out of this. I feel like Brittany's brother. I've noticed that you're wearing the same shirt seven days in a row. He's like, I'll buy a new one. That's fine. I don't wash clothes. I just buy. That's that's privilege. Yeah. We go to the laundromat, I guess. Oh, I'd rather go by the ghost, bro. I I did I my I, I did my time at the laundromat. I would rather face the ghost in my own house than have to go to a laundromat. That's privilege too. All right. Let's so let's get back to the story. Quote: The big light in the basement wasn't on at the time. So the only real light was coming in from the small windows scattered around the basement, one being in that room. When my brother looked into the room, his eyes immediately went to the rocking chair where he could see someone or something sitting there. He described the thing sitting there as a dark figure, but he could make out some of the smaller details. These smaller details included this thing wearing a long coat, like a trench coat, boots, And the most chilling thing he said was his entity had piercing red eyes. Like red eyes that glowed, not an eye shine. My brother immediately dropped his clothes and ran up the stairs and didn't tell anyone what happened for almost 10 years due to the pure fear that he felt. He never went in the basement after dark after this. And this was the last occurrence in sighting of this entity for almost 12 years. Damn. 10 years is a long time. Maybe I'm just, I don't know, maybe I'm just, I, I, I couldn't, I don't think I could go 10 minutes without telling someone about that. But I've never been traumatized in that way. Yeah. So I'd I don't know. You keep that, I don't know, it's like almost a way of like making it not real. Mm. Yeah, it's a different way of coping. It's if you speak it, it into existence, you know, if you talk about it, you're acknowledging that it really happened. Yeah. Where if you just never mention it. Mm-hmm. But it's like when I've had, I mean, I haven't had like. I have, but whenever I've had something weird happen, not necessarily terrifying, I feel like I always call you. Like, there's been two instances in the last three years where I saw something in the sky. Yeah. And both times within five minutes of seeing it, I called you. Yeah, but you were, like, really impressed. You- yeah, it was more like awe. Yeah. And it, that's not the same thing. This is like... Oh, uh, well, well, you wouldn't know what I felt like. Is did, well, did, No, you did answer. You did. You just didn't give a f- I was like, oh, cool, bro. You saw a UFO? <laughs> no, I meant, real. so, like, you didn't, like, you were with Ethan when that terrible thing yeah, happened. Yeah, so I wasn't alone. Right. So I I automatically had someone to share that experience with. What if you were alone? Oh, I probably would repress it. Yeah, yeah I probably you would yeah, not I, tell anybody. I, yeah. Well, I don't know. You might tell somebody. I might. I don't know. It's tough. 
But I'm also like, I don't know how old her brother is here in this situation. Yeah. But yeah, you wouldn't catch me in that basement right. at all. Like, I feel very lucky that I haven't had a massive experience somewhere I was living. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, there's been moments like when we had the apartment. Yeah. But I haven't, like, not quite like that. Yeah, that kid, for the winter months, if he had to do his own laundry, he didn't. During he, the day, that's day activity. Yeah. That's like as soon as you wake up. Well, once the sun's out. That's between noon and 4 p.m. on a sunny yeah, day. Yeah, you get home from school, you do your laundry, because that's the only time you have Mm-mm. during the winter. Mm-mm. Or you just buy new clothes. You just buy new clothes. Hitting up the Goodwill in the Plato's closet. So, back to the story. Quote, little things like seeing a tall, shadowy man standing in corners of rooms, around corners, in doorways, and down the stairs did happen through the decade of time, but nothing huge or incredibly memorable. After this longer stretch of time, there's two incidents that happened within a few weeks of each other. For the first one, my mom had been in her room late at night. She was struggling to sleep, so she decided to watch the TV that was on in the background. It was probably around 3 a.m. or so. The volume was pretty low on the TV because my dad was sleeping, but she wasn't really engaged with watching the TV anyway. And he had to get up in an hour. I know. God, that's that's so gross. After a few minutes of half-watching the TV, once again she heard heavy boot-like footsteps that started in the living room area and seemed to pace around for a little while. By the way, the last time she heard boots, they started from the basement. The heavy steps eventually made their way back to the hallway where all our bedrooms are and suddenly seemed to just stop. She waited for a moment, keenly trying to hear any other sounds or noises to give away who or what was out there. After a few minutes, she got up to see who it was, because obviously it wasn't my dad. She thought maybe it was me, because my brother wasn't home at the time, but when she checked on me, I was sound asleep. Which is true, I wasn't awake at the time, I think I'd fallen asleep around midnight or so. So there was no one it could have been, and she describes the footsteps as being similar to the ones of the man who had choked her. The second story doesn't have a specific link to this man, but it was just a couple of weeks after my mom's incident that we just talked about, so I thought I would share that too. This was around the time my dad was leaving for work again, 5 a.m., and once she had heard the clear sign that he was out the door and on his way to work, my mom ended up falling asleep with the dog in her room, and she kept the door closed, as it was always closed when they slept. Sometime later, probably an hour or two, she'd woken up to find the bedroom door wide open with the dog gone. And this was strange to her because she knows for a fact that the door was shut when she went to sleep and there was no one else around. She thought maybe it was her husband, but it just didn't feel right. And when she got up and walked in the kitchen, my dog was standing completely stiff and staring at something with all her hair raised, not taking her eyes off whatever she was looking at. My dog only broke eye contact with whatever it was when she heard the boards creak under my mom's foot and looked back at my mom before looking back at whatever she was terrified of. My mom moved more into the kitchen and got a closer look at what was scaring my dog, only to see the front door wide open. There was absolutely no reason the door should or could have been opened, seeing as my dad shuts and locks the door when he leaves, and he was the last person out the door. The wind could not have opened it, and no person besides my mom was even awake in the house. Me and my brother were still asleep, and would be for at least another hour, and neither of us had woken up. We confirmed it when she brought this up to us later that day. The weirdest thing was that my dog just stayed stuck in this position, staring at the door with all of her hair raised. My mom said you could tell that the dog was absolutely terrified of whatever happened to be there, and just kept looking in between my mom and the door like she just knew it wasn't normal. Also, my dog is kind of wild, and she'll take any chance she can to run out the door and run around. If she's not being held back and the door is wide open, she would normally take the chance and bolt it. So why didn't she? Why was she rooted in her place, staring at it with her hair raised? The other weird thing about this, as I said before, they keep their bedroom door closed at night, and it was wide open. My dad closed it before he left, as he does every morning when he leaves, and the door is heavy and takes more force than wind just to be moved. And there was no wind, there was no airflow in the house for that matter, because all the windows were shut seeing as it was fall, basically winter. There's really no explanation for why any of this happened. We're not directly linking this to the trench coat man. It's just odd, seeing as the experience that happened just a few weeks before was most likely him as well. 
But these happening close together could just be a coincidence, I'll be honest. These are the main experiences we have with this man who seems to be in our house. There's also little things, like I said before, like seeing him out of the corner of your eye, in doorways, in the corner of rooms, etc. Like this one time, I saw him standing in our dining room against the wall, but he was so tall, he almost had to hunch over to even fit in there. I genuinely don't know who this man is, or who he could be, because he's no relative, and there was no one that died in the house that we know of. All I know is I don't go in my dad's storage room, and I don't sleep in my parents' room, because that's where you seem to either see him or hear him the most. So, I avoid it the best that I can. Unquote. Jesus. That's, um, it's pretty scary. Yeah. Pretty scary story. It's scary, too, because with the spacing of it, like, it's not, it's better than maybe, like, four months of, like, intensity where you feel like you got to get someone in to cleanse the house. Yeah. But it's also, like, do you ever feel free? Like, it, yeah. like it's, like, a, almost like a volcano. Like, you could be dormant for 10 years, but you never know when the next thing's going to happen. Corrupt anytime. I would leave the house. I mean. <laughs> He's so gone. It, I, there's other houses in Michigan, Brittany. There are. Get, and maybe you can move closer to your dad's job so he doesn't have to wake up at, at four. four. Yeah. Maybe he live, works in Detroit and they're like an hour away from Detroit. I don't know. I don't know. That spooky, spooky stuff. Including the time he gets up. But let's talk about that in the discussion. All right. Now is the time that we like to stop the episode and thank our newest patrons who, as of the recording of this episode... Include Allison, Jessica, Shanice, and Arctra. Arctra. I'm sure you nailed it. Yep. (laughs) So uh, thank you so much for joining our Patreon and supporting the podcast. It means a lot to us. One thing that I want to highlight. Okay. (laughs) Is the Netflix horror movie Watch Party. It's a lot of fun. There's it's multifaceted because we put a poll out on our Patreon. Yeah. Of three movies. So y'all get to choose what we watch. Like, Typically. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, sometimes we, we make a, 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 a uh, judgment decision. Executive decision. Executive decision. But 11 times out of 12, <laughs> we put a poll out there. Y'all get to vote on it. And it's just a really cool experience. You know, it, it's like getting together virtually and watching the same movie. We use the tele, Teleplay app. A free Chrome extension. It is, yeah. So as long as you have a Netflix account, you can join watch. We're all watching it in real time. There's a nice chat uh, box on the right. I think it helps if you're in America, too. Yeah. Have some issues with that. Yeah, you might have to use Surfshark. Yeah, VPN. you might have to use Surfshark. Not, well. Not sponsoring, not sponsoring. Not, not sponsoring this episode, but yeah. you, are, you, know, you are good friends. They're over good friends. Yeah. Jaws. You know, but it's just cool because, like, it's, it's another form of community. It's like, I love horror movies. Anything to do with horror movies, I'm excited but just a joke and talk about it with a bunch of our you know listeners and our Patreon at the same time. Also, shout out Bethany, who always makes a custom, fun movie drink to go along they're with it. They're very cool. Yeah. And very tasty. Typically very tasty. Sometimes yeah. they're not as sweet as I would like. But yeah. She is a... She's a true mixologist. True mixologist. Yeah. It's works of art that she puts out. Absolutely. Not like your rum and coke or my uh, hey, cranberry They vodka. get us through. They get us through. What would you like to highlight from our Patreon, Charlie? Boy, there's a lot of stuff going on Patreon. Something I want to highlight. It's not going to come out for a while, and because we won't put one out in January, is the theatrical reading. Yeah, it's we we've had such a love hate relationship with the theatrical reading. It's come, it's gone, it's come again because people like it a lot, and they're highly produced, written stories. We get people to do the acting that's not us because we want it to be really good. <laughs> and we put a lot of sound effects, music. It's a it's a lot of fun. Ben's written the last two, and they've been incredible. Yeah, we, and we, we do accept submissions, though. Yeah. So if you are a horror writer like Travis from our first, I was just uh, thinking that. first story, and you know you want to have the opportunity to have your story be a theatrical reading on Patreon, feel free to reach out to us or send it our way. But it's fun. It's one of my biggest inspirations was the No Sleep podcast. Yeah. So it's, it's very much an ode to them of creating... A, a nice fictional high sound effect high music high quality story yeah it's a lot of fun no, but that's a very good one yep so you know thank you to everyone who has recently joined thank you for everyone who's been continually supporting us it really goes a long way and we appreciate it with that said let's get back to the main episode all right we got two stories 
Yes. Uh, we got yeah. Travis in the abandoned hut, the concrete village, the uh, journal, the candles. Okay. Do you think a girl? Well, ah, I'm just and we, excited. And we, and we got story two, the trench coat man. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So do you think a girl mm. saw this hut that everyone went to, or this, this, this concrete thing that everyone went to and saw this hut? Yeah. Took her journal there and wrote her journal there. It wasn't like from the past. It was a recent girl, someone in the same time period as Travis and his friends just stored her diary there because she didn't have a good home life. Yeah. I mean, I think that's entirely possible. I think so too. I, I need more context on like, was this like the local hangout or was there only like a few people that happened to stumble upon it? Well, like, I don't know. Hang out in a concrete jungle. They did. It's not New York. They did. I, I, I don't, I don't, I want to know how populated, like, is it, was it common to play around there and see other people there, like a, a park? Or is it just like over the course of a few months, a few people stumbled in? It would be very cool to play like paintball at this place mm. or, or uh, airsoft or something like that. Also, why is there an abandoned hut? In this concrete dumping ground. That is very weird. I do think that's something magical. The Faye put that there. <laughs> Baba Yaga put that there. Something like that. It didn't, like, was it there before? They Like, was there just one abandoned house? And they're like, this is the perfect place to dump concrete. Or did somebody think, like, I'm going to build this here. You know but there what? was, like, a TV there. There was stuff. I, I have a theory, actually. A okay. Real rational theory. This dumping ground started as a construction site. They built a temporary hut. To put that stuff into, like, do, like, the the office stuff. Oh, like a foreman? Yeah, like office. a foreman's a foreign office. Yeah. And the the site got abandoned. Everyone started dumping stuff there, and that's what that hut is from. Mm. You know, that was real and rational. Thank I you. I like that. Thank you very much. No, I think it's Bobby Yaga, honestly. <laughs> I don't know. So, I mean, but the, apparently this is all true. Like, these are not the facts we're supposed to be judging. <laughs> like, this is this is supposed to be accepted truth. Yeah. So yeah. what we're supposed to be looking at with a skeptical eye is they find this potential grave, this small grave. Yeah. They find a pentagram thing. Mm-hmm. Two candles lit. I mean, they did. They found that. They kicked the candle. Travis. Not a good move. Um, you were setting up your horror career right there. Yeah. Easier than getting hit by a van like Stephen King, but and and then they met it. They felt well. Another thing that we didn't really talk too much about, but we also have experience with. They felt like they were getting like there was an energy when they were leaving. Yeah. Now they said it was more like following them slash trying to lure them back. Where you and I were more like get out of here. Like we yeah. had that get out of here feeling. I didn't want us to be there. So then then it's the meditation and his friend sees. Yeah, every time she closes her eyes, she sees that grave yeah. with a woman like crawling out. Although, how much of that is influenced by like the ring? I mean, I, I can't tell you how recently they saw it, but uh, yeah, I mean, like you think of like a girl crawling out of something. It, yeah, it gives you the well, Samara, mm-hmm. for sure. I don't know. I it's it's tough when you start getting into the mind, like things you yeah. see, like when we do like, sleep paralysis. Or like even uh, last week we did the Matrix. Yeah, it was like the guy who had the world freeze around him. Yeah, the mind and the brain are very complicated, and when you start getting into sensations that people are having rather than tangible things, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to discern. I'm also not convinced that was just middle school flirting. (laughs) I don't. I don't. Be honest with everybody. I didn't have a lot of experience back then, so I don't know. So. I don't know. I don't know. It's what, what is the, like, and also Travis feeling depressive down dark. That's definitely, I mean, I mean, if I had gone farther, you could say those are signs of oppression mm-hmm. or even infestation. So the, 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 the thing is don't kick the candle. Right? Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. So believable being there is dark stuff happening there. They interacted with it and it, it affected Renee in the moment by mm-hmm. having that vision. It affected all three of them when they were leaving and it affected potentially Travis for a year. Definitely. Yeah. That's believable. Unbelievable. Middle school kids, uh, the, their imagination was running wild. Where do you land on this? It's hard. And also there's the idea that 
the kids pick up on things easier than like an adult would. That's a very good point. And it's like, regardless, something was there. Like something made the grave like things. Something yeah. made this, this pentagram, something lit those candles. It yeah. does seem like it's almost ritualistic too. What, like whatever, who, like a real person could have done bad things there to try to get the negative energy and they like left like dang it it didn't work and then travis and his friends came (laughs) yeah and they paid the price i i do have just a kernel of doubt just because so you can't go believable i can't but i do go viable i'll go viable too just because it feels like just bad juju yeah could have been imagination running wild but also for a year after you can keep poking holes at where it could be imagination but ultimately i do think it is something dark the craziest thing is the concrete. <laughs> it's, in both of these stories, it's the real details that get me. Yeah. Waking up at 4 a.m. <laughs> and this concrete dumping ground. All right, so moving on to Brittany's story, her very haunted house. Man, one of the creepiest images of the whole story that she gave us was such a gloss over. Yeah, sometimes I see him standing in the dining room, and he's so tall he has to hunch over. Yes. That is... What? Yes. Now that's not scarier than being choked. Like for her no, mom, no. Like, you know. It's still terrifying though. Like and she, I know she's used to this kind of thing. <laughs> but Jesus Christ. Uh visual like the choking is like the smack you in the face part of the story where yeah. you know like uh, you know 4 years from now if you think about this episode you might think about the choking aspect of it. But visually I I'm a, I like the visual images from an episode. It is the entity sitting in the rocking chair. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And this tall thing hunched over in the corner of a room. Yeah. But not going to lie. I hope the, the image is the guy in the rocking chair. Oh, the graphic? Yeah. Yeah, probably. But I mean. I wonder how much time the dad did spend in that room. You know, because. He probably, he probably fell asleep in that <laughs> chair when he came home. <laughs> after working 12 hour days. <laughs> I, You know what I mean? Like if he did spend a lot of time. In that room, he probably would have felt it more than, unless he wasn't sensitive, like, at all. He probably didn't work until nine. He's like, I just gotta get the f*** out of this haunted house. <laughs> yeah. He just went somewhere else to sleep in the parking lot in his car of his company's office building. Listen, I I kind of attacked the, the choking story earlier in the episode, because I do think there's a possibility it could have been a bad dream. Yeah. But now we know the whole story. The boots came back. Other people in the family have seen an entity. Yeah. They, they're making shadow figures hunched over in the corner as a throwaway detail because they're seeing things so much and so common. I mean, I go believable. Like there, I think this is believable, not maybe in every little tiny detail yeah. happened. Cause I, I mean, there's still that little bit of me that's like, er, could it have been sleep paralysis? Could it have been a really, really bad dream? Mm-hmm. But I mean, they're even joking about it. You know, multiple multiple came people, back. I wish that voice came back. In I don't think they aspect. wish it. No, I don't. I want their life either. to be worse for more content. <laughs> no, I need more. That's not what I mean. Don't do this to me. Um, Go make a pentagram on the side of their house and kick over some candles. Yeah, that'll do it. Start talking, you trench no, coat. I believe man. it happened. Like the Dick Tracy, the the amount of ghosts and activity in the home seems pretty. I don't want to say extreme, but pretty large. Consistent. Yeah. Because even though there's like 10 years between the big happenings. Yeah. I mean, she says twice in her submission that seeing things in the corner of your eye, seeing things in the corners was common. Yeah. And man, I just do not like. Sounds like Michigan for you. <laughs> trust me. I get being saddled with a mortgage. I get how moving sucks. I've moved multiple times. I don't know if I could live in a haunted house like people that have submitted us stories. I don't think I have this th- skin thick enough to do it. I, I don't. I know I don't. Mm-mm. So you go believable as well? I do. There it is. So that is our episode on the trench coat shadow man, but also uh, the, the spooky pedogram concrete jungle. Thank you, Travis and Brittany, for submitting your story. Reminder, if you have a personal paranormal encounter that you want told on the podcast head to believing the bizarre.com in the menu you'll see submit your experience there's a form there use the form but maybe copy and paste write in a full document so you know you're not you don't feel confined 
By the form, you know? It's not solitary confinement. It's not a prison. It's freeing. Go into Word doc, pages, whatever you need. Write out your story in as much detail as possible and then paste it in the form. And we'll get it in, um, down the road sometime. Eventually. Eventually it'll make its way to the podcast. And also, if you're enjoying this mm. uh, and you want more content, Come to Believing the Boozar on May 3rd. I did, a, I did a twist there. You didn't expect that. I didn't expect it. Come to Believing the Boozar. Live. On Twitch for free. I think it's probably the most important element of that. It's free. It's a free show. You can win some stuff, and it's going to be fun. I am i don't know how it's going to go. I'll be honest. Little little transparency here. I typically like having my hand on the pulse of how an event goes and yeah. being the one to transition. But I've talked to producer Ben. And and you were there, yeah. and I I want him to like get it down because yeah. I don't know how. And we're also going to be uh, what's the word cogent, coherent, coherent. There you go. This isn't like a massive endorsement of alcohol. Like obviously Charlie and I are of age. We're in our thirties, yeah. like you know, but we're not big drinkers, which no. I think will make it even more fun. That I we're think not big so drinkers. too. Yeah, but this isn't like romanticizing or making it like you can only have a good time if you have a drink or not. But I think it'll be humorous. It's a, it's a spin on what we've done. And it'll be fun to see, like, when we're a little bit loose. Not in what the right in a, mind. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not, like, you know, like, I, I'm not trying to overly promote alcohol or anything like that. It's just, it's going to be one fun night. Alcohol doesn't need your help. <laughs> I just, you know, because honestly, I'm not that much of a drinker. But that, right. that makes it even more exciting for me because I don't know. But it's going to be creepy stories. We're going to be reading creepy stories. We're going to do our best reading creepy stories. stories. What, what's going to be your drink of choice, you thought? Well, I, for something a little bit lighter, I like Angry Orchard. Mm. Like a nice cider. Mm. And then a little bit harder, I got rum and coke. Yeah, I think I'm just going to be doing the sugar-free Red Bull and vodka. I was telling someone, that I was telling Steph, that's what you're planning on drinking the whole night. I'd be She's levitating. Like, He's going to die. Yeah, my heart's going to be like, the thump. I'm going to be up and down. Yeah. Like, depressed and very into it. <laughs> uh, giveaways, quizzes. For those of you on Patreon, not, not to spoil, but I think Remembering the Bazaar might be something we're going to be doing, and there mm-hmm. will be punishment if we get things wrong. Yes. And uh, last time we did this punishment, Charlie threw up on video. I did. So I'm very excited. It's going to be so much fun. Again, that's May 3rd, which is a Friday. Put it in your calendar. Yeah. Follow us on Twitch. Create a Twitch if you don't have one. Follow us. It is, it's all free. Mm-hmm. The, the only reason we're telling you to do it now is because if you do it the day of, you're like, you won't forget. oh, I got to sign up and I yeah. got to do this. And I got to get an email verification and and it's like, how do I work this thing? It's like, you know, figure that out first, follow another mm-hmm. channel, you know, use them as your guinea pig. And then when you feel like, I mean, I'm talking to younger people. You guys know how to use Twitch. <laughs> if your parents are listening, I'm talking to them. Absolutely. But it'll be a lot of fun. And I'm very excited for that. If you like this episode, if you're on Apple, you can comment on the whole podcast, leave a five-star review. As a whole. Let us know what you think. If, if, if you're not feeling like you're leaving five stars, there's nothing wrong with keeping thoughts to yourself. <laughs> it's true. Although if you say something wild enough. <laughs> yeah, it'll. Oh, actually, yeah, there might be something about that on um, Believing the Booze Are as well. Um, if you're listening on Spotify, like we know you are, probably, yeah, you can leave a comment on every single individual episode. You can also vote whether or not you find this episode believable on Spotify. I got a couple, I got a couple from our last episode. Oh, yeah, what are they? One, two, one, three, three, nine, zero, three, zero, eight, four. Sick. Said great episode. Not sure if I missed it, but what was the other episode y'all did with your guests? Love the chemistry. That was Robert Matthews' UFO abduction. A lot of fun, that if, one, too. If you like our, our episode we did with Allie and Nat from Let's Get Haunted, and The Matrix that we just did, and The Glitches of the Matrix, go check out our episode, Robert Matthews' UFO yeah. Incident. And we're on their podcast, yes. too. If you look at The Gray Man, yeah. we were on their podcast as well. Um, Madeline Crespo Rodriguez says, excellent podcast. You should bring them back. Funny, intense, interesting ideas. Love you guys. Keep it up. I think they'll be back. It might be yeah. a yearly thing at this point. It'll, it'll happen eventually. Alicia Lowe said, I love this episode. Also, I didn't let my Sims age either, Tyler. (laughs) No, you need control. We're not ready for change. And Angelina said, I listened to this episode before my lunch break, and I was scrolling through Netflix after listening. And what was the first thing I saw? The The Matrix Matrix movie. Yeah. So thank you for everybody um, leaving the comments. It's fun. If you say some really mean or wild shit, that's fine. I just won't publish it. (laughs) That's right. Like if you leave a five-star review, I can't control that. But if you comment on an episode, I have the power. (laughs) 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 So it ain't getting through. But I'll still read them. So if you really want to hurt our feelings, you can get to us, (laughs) but the world won't see it. Yeah. 
But thank you everybody so much. Oh, and, and you know, by the way, if you know if you want to support the podcast, Patreon's there. Please. There might be some benefit to that joining yeah. for Bizarre. If you do, that's amazing. We 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 appreciate you, but if you don't, we also appreciate you for listening. Yeah, if you're still listening right now, like a lot of you already clicked out once it's the fair. episode was over. Fair. So if you're listening right now, I appreciate you. And that means you also get the bloopers and the jokes at the end. That's true. There's people out there that have no idea that we probably they don't have even a, know about the bloopers. They're missing out. If you only listen on YouTube, I'm sorry, you don't get them there. This it's only for the main feed. Oh, really? Only I actually for the did not know feed. that. Yeah. Well, I found out who doesn't watch our YouTube. <laughs> 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 our YouTube still images for uh, an hour. Yeah, it's not me. But thank you, everybody, so much. We appreciate you. Thank you for listening to the podcast that never in a million years would kick over a candle by a pentagram. As always, I'm Tyler. And I'm Charlie. And catch us next week on Believing the Bizarre. A podcast as bizarre as you are. <laughs>